Hey everybody, Ryan Hyatt, David Collier. We just finished up the Monday press conference, the regular Monday media availability there for Cliff Kingsbury and selected players. It's Pat Mahomes basically talking about Pat Mahomes on Pat Mahomes Media Day is what it turns <laughs> into. But today, a lot of talk about the Red Raiders going on the road, playing at Arizona State, how big a deal that is, how different it is. I, I'll, I'll say this, David, I think this team showed in non-conference play they could get it done in a hostile environment in Arkansas on the mm -hmm. hills. It won't be anything that hostile, in my opinion, when you get out to Tempe. I think it's a little overblown in non-conference going on the road yeah it, it just depends I think if you it depends on the situation for me and I think Cliff mentioned that as well how good the other team is the situation is a little different you're playing on the road at night a late night game and I don't know if the the place will be packed and the atmosphere will be great but that obviously known as a, a party town there in Tempe and the Arizona State students and whatnot um, but yeah you mentioned it they were able to do it at Arkansas and you've got to, you know you worry about maybe like the defensive line the offensive line but the defensive line got a couple of guys that showed that they could play last weekend and they played yeah. in big environments in Pipkins and uh, Colin Hill. I mean, you play yeah, at Notre Dame and you play at Michigan. You've played in big stadiums, a lot bigger than you're going to see in Tempe. Yeah, I think it's a, a bigger deal who you're going to play mm -hmm. uh, than where you're going to play. And, and I liken it to this. In conference play, I may have upperclassmen who've gone on the road, played somewhere and had some success they feel good about, but maybe they've gone in there and spent a house of horrors yeah. and they don't want to go or they just have bad vibes. These guys have no, no bad vibes in Tempe, and they certainly don't have any bad vibes playing Arizona State. Go back and look at the bowl game video a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little overrated. The start time, eh, you just got to stretch out your day. They, are, they started that yesterday. Yeah. You start stretching out your day a little bit, a little bit when you're going outside your time zone. Uh, and and they, they keep them busy on game day. There's multiple meetings. There's all sorts of stuff going by. They're not just sitting around playing Nintendo or whatever the latest video game is in, in their hotel room. Yeah, and I, you know, Arizona State will be ready. Todd Graham, I think, is 4-0 in his last uh, four meetings against Power 5 teams at home there at Sun Devil Stadium. I don't know. I, yeah, it's probably a little overblown, but the youth on the offensive line scares me and some of the issues that Cliff yes. complained about during his press conference and in the post-game press conference as well uh, along the line, their struggles blocking there, and, and the wide receivers as well. We talked to Jonathan Giles after the game, and he yeah. even readily admitted that you know, he had some good catches, but he did not block how the, the coaching staff wants I, him to. I know Tech fans don't like them opening as an underdog. You got your three on the road, I get that. But the reason why they're not favored is because you still don't know a lot about this team. It's hard to translate anything from Stephen F. I yeah. mean, really, the only thing I took away, they played with really good tempo in pace in the first quarter and a half when it mattered. Mm -hmm. I, I thought they were organized. The sideline was organized. The plays got in good. That was good. The defense showed a physicality and a physical superiority to a team they should. Mm -hmm. It hadn't always been the case the last few years. That, to me, really all I can kind of take away from this deal right now. And the one thing that impressed me, and it was mentioned in the press conference as well, we didn't see as many penalty flags. It was a yeah. really long game, and we still didn't see that yeah. many penalty flags. The brain flags. didn't go out on them. And that might go to what you just said, playing a team that you were physically just much better than, and it'll be interesting to see how that translates to whenever you're playing a much better team. Quick hits around the Big 12. Uh, we'll start off with uh, the Oklahoma loss to Houston. Mm -hmm. One kiddos that doesn't get Houston in the Big 12 it may in fact <laughs> hurt them. They just lost at least one more vote there yeah. in Norman. Uh, okay, are, are their title hopes, BCS playoff hopes, whatever you want to call it, completely dashed by this? Is it over for them? Oklahoma? Yeah. Oh, I would think so. The only, I was talking to Andrew Doak, the weekend guy here on the Red Raider Nation, about it on Sunday. The only possible way that they get in is Texas is still good, mm -hmm. Houston runs the table, and OU runs the table in hopes that the rest of the right. Big 12 is really good. And I still don't think they're going to let Houston and Oklahoma in. And this is where I will disagree with anybody who later on will say, well, if there was a Big 12 title game, Oklahoma could play their way back in. Who would they play in the title game in this play, league? I mean, it, Nobody that would matter. Exactly. Nobody that would vault them in. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying they're 100% done because who knows? You could have multiple lost teams this year. And squirrely stuff happens. But a right lot's now, they don't control their own destiny. Yeah, that's they're sure. a, uh, they control their own destiny. Saturday in Austin, the Longhorns serve notice mm. that uh, they have found a quarterback. My goodness, shouldn't the league pass a rule? You can have Charlie Strong or a good quarterback. You can't have both. Yeah, I know. Well, the, Charlie Strong maybe come to the realization that he's not going to win with a good defense, giving up 47 points. Mm -hmm. I, still wins with that, so that's that's good for yeah. him, I guess. But I, he's got to be scratching his head after the ball game defensively against the Notre, Notre Dame team. But uh, Kaiser, six touchdowns total, yep. like uh, Patrick Mahomes. So we got a couple of good quarterbacks. There were, I mean, that's not even talking about Bouchel or Tyrone Swoops. That's a good dynamic they have there. And, You've said this before, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. But in this situation, I really like 
the way they use swoops because you know you know where I went to school and it, yeah. it worked for Blake Bell, the bell dozer. And I think as long as they use it in that situation, because I I I. I like everybody else there knew that he was going to run the ball yeah. when they when he came in on the goal line and they could, still couldn't stop it. And they still it. couldn't stop it. And that's a good Notre Dame team. Mm. They'll they'll be just fine. I mean, they they've got the talent level. They could reel off five, six, seven wins uh, coming up. I think they got Nevada next. Michigan State will be their next big name opponent. Uh, and, and really, if you're a Big 12 fan, you want Notre Dame to look good because mm -hmm. you need – right now this team desperately needs, I think, a little e image rehab after what happened there uh, with Oklahoma and the Houston game. And, you know, uh, TC didn't exactly look lights.